I'm Jeremy Pearsons, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Today, you are seeing a timeless teaching from the KCM archives. And all this week, we've been learning about the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, how to use it, when to use it, where to use it. And this word that Brother Copeland taught in 1989 still applies to what you face today. It's alive and it's powerful now. So go get your Bible, get into the word with Brother Copeland through this teaching ministry on a daily basis, uh, we could go from religious ideas to life's realities. In other words, to, to live in victory every day, to do it on a seven-day-a-week basis, to be, be a, a total victory in Christ Jesus at all times. Now, I'm not talking about some sort of... Um, an idea of some sort of utopia on earth where you just tippy-toe through life. I've heard people say, well, you know, that's what those faith teachers preach. I never heard anybody preach that, and I never met anybody stupid enough to believe that. But you don't get rid of the problems. If anything, the problems increase because your productivity increases. But we do want to come to a place where we begin to, by faith, overcome the problems. Now, well, let's... let's Pray right quick before we do any more of this because we want to have God's full anointing on this today. <laughs> We're going to get into some good stuff. Father, we thank you for the Word. We thank you for the Spirit of God. And we thank you, sir, for the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from the book of Hebrews. If you have your Bibles, well, you might get it out and uh, open it up to Hebrews. Let me, while you're doing that, let me mention this to you. Most people watch this broadcast early in the morning before they go to work, which is, uh, I think, God's uh, best for this. But now, there are a lot of you that have to watch it some other time of day because of certain times that it comes on on, on television or uh, during the day, if you're gone from home and can't get to a television when this thing comes on, get a VCR, believe God, get a hold of a VCR and hook the thing up and tape it. Set the machine up and tape the thing and then you can watch it that night and get ready for your day the next morning or watch it early in the morning before you leave the house to go to work. The thing that is so important is to get into God's Word first in the day. Establish yourself spiritually. Establish your victory and resist the devil before you get out there in the world where he is. Do it there in, on your turf, on your uh, terms, and in the name of Jesus, bind him up before you have to leave the house and go to work. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about the power and the authority in the name of Jesus, and yesterday we were talking about the fact that we have been, according to the Word, translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son before you die and go to heaven. In fact, if you're not already a child of God and already in the kingdom of God, when you die, you're not going to heaven. This is what happens when a person makes Jesus Christ their, their Lord and personal Savior and, and receive Him as Lord and turn your life over to Him, you are actually entering into a blood covenant agreement and arrangement between you and Jesus that gives you access by faith to the Heavenly Father. Otherwise, you wouldn't have any way to come to the Father because of Adam and Satan coming together in a left-handed covenant sort of a way back there in the Garden of Eden and Adam giving Satan his authority over mankind, over the whole human race. So, Jesus is by our covenant relationship in him through his blood. That's what, that's what that's talking about when it's talking about the, his blood is the blood of the covenant between us and Jesus and takes us in Jesus giving us access to the Heavenly Father. Now, that's what it means by praying in His name. What all we do, everything we do, the book of Colossians says, all that we do, every deed we do, every word we say, do it and say it in the name of Jesus. In other words, live your life 
in a covenant relationship at all times. There's no use in you having to go out and do something in your own strength. There's no use in you having to go hunt a job out on your own. Well, you know, I mean, I don't want to bother God with this. Well, that's stupid, brother. You're not going to bother him with it. You bother him when you don't have anything to do with him and you don't walk and live in that covenant relationship. He has promised to lead and guide you in all the affairs of life. All right. Now, in closing yesterday, we talked about these two things. We've been given his name the same as a man gives his wife his name when they enter into a covenant relation called a marriage. It's the same thing. That's the reason the Christian marriage is carried out like it is because it is a type of our union with Jesus, uh, his being the groom, we being in the part of the bride in that covenant relationship. And when we come to Jesus and we make him Lord over our lives, he gives us his name and all of his assets. And when he does that, then we become a child of God. For instance, this is very important. I want you to hear this. When Gloria and I got married, my dad, A.W. Copeland, did not adopt Gloria as his daughter. He didn't have to. She became his daughter when she became one with me. We use the word daughter-in-law, and, and that's, that's really uh, unnecessary. She became a part of my family. She became part of me. I became part of her. I look at her mother just the same as I look at my mother. I, she's not mother-in-law. Gloria is not my dad's daughter-in-law. I mean, I, I'm Mary Niece's son, and, and Gloria is A.W. Copeland's daughter because she is not just related to me. We are one, okay? I have given her my name in all that it stands for. Now, she uses that name as her own. It's on all of her documents. It is legally hers. She has the authority and the right of that name. And the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 3 that all the family, both in heaven and in earth, has been named after Jesus. Praise God. Now, we also talked about the fact that the name depends on how much corporate power is covered by the name. And I used that illustration day before yesterday about, you know, Podunk Valley or San Francisco. You got this little country town out there that maybe doesn't have but half a dozen people in it. And so there's really, as, as a, you know, as a township, uh, if some fella came up and said, you know, I'm the... I'm the chief law enforcement officer of Podunk Valley. Well, his corporate power is not a whole lot because the, the corporation that he represents doesn't, doesn't have much. You put it all together, and it wouldn't amount to anywhere near what the corporate structure of the city of Dallas does. So in order to know the power in a name, you have to know what's behind that name. Now, you remember... When we read the scripture in Colossians, uh, I referred to it there a minute ago, but in the reading of that scripture that said we've been delivered from the authority of darkness, I want you to let, let, me, let me just read this to you here again. This is Colossians 1.12. Boy, you ought to put stars and lines and everything else around this in your Bible. Giving thanks unto the Father which has, now notice that's past tense, which has made us able... The King James says meet, M-E-E-2. It's, it's an old English word that means able or capable or has a right to. Has made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light in him. In him or in whom we have redemption. Now, I want you to... How can I say this? Help me, Jesus. Uh, well, listen, listen to this from the Word. This is from the book of Hebrews, the very first chapter, and this is the first five verses. I want you to listen to this now. 
God, who at sundry times and in different manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now listen to this. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Now remember, it says we've been made able to be uh, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And then it goes ahead to explain there in Colossians that that is in Jesus. Now listen. He is appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels. Now listen to this statement. Grab hold of this. Mark it in your Bible. Make a note of it somewhere. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now when did this occur? When he was born in a manger? No. When he was born in a manger was not when he came into existence. That's when he was born of a woman. When he went to the cross, died, went into hell, suffered there, was raised from the dead. Now this is it right here. He's raised from the dead, the Lord of glory, seated at the right hand of majesty on earth. That's what that means, seated at the right hand of majesty. The right hand of God. The right hand in covenant relationship. The right hand in most every expression of every culture on earth means authority. Why, wow, that fellow over that, why, wow, that guy, why, wow, that's his, that's that man's right arm, boy, talking about his authority, talking about his investment of authority in that right arm. Boy, I mean, I couldn't do without that fellow. Why, well, he's my right arm. You know, you see what I mean by that? All right. The, the right hand of God Almighty then is the joint, I mean, is the heir of God, God's very right arm. It said he's turned over all judgment to the hand of the Son. All right, now, in the book of, of Romans and is referred to throughout the New Testament in, in many, 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 many ways, it says that we are joint heirs with Jesus. In the 8th chapter of Romans, it says we are joint heirs with him. We are heirs of God. In the book of Galatians, it says we are no longer servants but sons. And if, sir, if sons, then heirs of God. Hallelujah. Whew, glory. Now, I want you to hear all that because here's what I want to point out to you. The greatness of the mighty name of Jesus and the corporate power behind it is threefold. And we're talking about in this first area of it here is in inheritance. The power in his name can only be measured by the power of God. Woo, glory to God. It can only be measured. The power and authority of that name can only be measured by being able to measure the greatness of God. You can't measure the greatness of God. God is above every name that's named. That's right. And that's what the scripture says, that he has been given a name which is above every name that's named. Now the greatness of his name is... is we're going to divide it up into three general terms where we can look at it. And the first one here is in the field of inheritance. He was separated from God when he went into hell. When he paid the price of sin for you and for me on the cross, he was separated from God. He was cast out from God. And the Bible said he died the death uh, of a sinner. He wasn't a sinner, but he died the death of a sinner, taking our place. Amen. Now, when he was raised up from the dead and broke the power of death, 
praise God, I want you to know that, well, the scripture says right here, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten, now no, notice this. Oh, dear Lord, I can't read the thing without just getting shouting happy. He's never from the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. After Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is never again called the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. But from there, after he's raised from the dead, he's no longer called the only begotten Son of God. He's called the firstborn from the dead. He's called the first begotten of many brethren. There's a lot of things that that means, mainly over in the area of covenant relationship. If you, you enter into covenant with someone and you make that, that man your son through covenant, then that son doesn't get the the rights of a son on down the line because, you know, they had birthrights of the firstborn. And when you receive someone as a son by covenant, he got all the firstborn rights because he was, he was brought into the family not by natural birth. He was brought in by choice. And so the adopted son or the covenant son was, was given all the rights of the firstborn. Israel was called the firstborn of God. And God told Pharaoh, he said, you let my firstborn go or I'm going to kill yours. Boy, it come down to combat with God, and when it come down to it, he was beginning to fight for his covenant relation over there, which were the children of Abraham, and he said, all right, I've tried every way there is to make you turn those folk loose, and now it's come down to this. You let go of my firstborn, or I'm going to take yours. Boy, 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 boy. I mean, it just kind of makes your head swim when you begin to think about all this and the way it works. Now, Jesus then raised from the dead, the Bible said, God said, and again, I'll be a father to him. And again, he'll be my son. Well, see, there was a separation between Jesus and God. This is the reason Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was so torn up. He, he saw this thing coming and he said, if there's any way. But there wasn't. He said, so not my will, but thine be done. So there was a separation that came there between God and and Jesus, and Jesus paid the price for sin. He left the presence of God so you and I could be brought into his presence. And when he was raised from the dead, the Bible said the scepter of righteousness, praise God. You know what a scepter is? In the court of a king, when the king points that scepter at somebody, even if he's a commoner, and the king points that scepter at him, that means that that he is now part of the court and his words and what he has to say and his witness can be recorded and carries weight because now he's part of the court, even if it was just temporary when the scepter was pointed. And this is called the scepter of right standing with God. And God pointed that scepter at the resurrected Jesus and said, I judge this man spotless. I judge this man spotless before me. And he had borne the sin of the world. He had borne Adam's transgression. I mean, he went into hell, and the price was deep for this thing. So when God appointed him, praise the Lord, he inherited everything that God had. He raised him from the dead and said, Again, I'll be a father to him. And he entered into this covenant of blood, and it was in the precious, sinless sweet blood of Jesus. And that blood is on the heavenly mercy seat today of the new covenant. And we have become joint heirs with him and the name by which we are named, the name by which we pray, the name by which we speak to the devil, the name by which we do every deed and say every word is that name that Jesus inherited from almighty God. God, hallelujah. He inherited Jehovah Healer. He inherited Jehovah God. He inherited all the redemptive names of God and all that God is and all that God ever shall be. He inherited it, hallelujah. And we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We've been given that name. So how can you measure the power in the name of Jesus? You can't. You'd have to be able to measure God. And about the time you got it all measured, 
by the time you measured it all, while you were measuring, it would have expanded that, that much more again. You could measure throughout eternity and you'd never be able to measure it all because all that God is and all that God has is continually expanding at all times and every way. So, whoo, I don't know what it is. I don't either, praise God. I can just tell you this, to measure his name, you'd have to be able to measure all that God is all that God has, all that God ever will be. No wonder it said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same as God. He is God. He's God manifest in the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's our God. He's my God. He's your God. And we have his name. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, he achieved the authority of his name by confirmation. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, the word says that his name was conferred upon him or there was given him a name which is above every name. I was, I was working for a company one time that flew a pilot service for a very well-known family, very, very wealthy, very powerful family in the United States. And this man was very wealthy in, in his own right, very powerful man. And uh, he, it was, you know, he still had the same name. But uh, when he became head of the family, when he became the authority over all that family, and the fa that family is an international family. It is, I mean, this meant that he was in authority over, over things in other nations of the earth, big, ma massive thing. But when he became head of the family, boy, I mean, they doubled security. They had all kinds of things. To just to go up there where we used to just land there and pick him up, no big deal. I mean, you know, they had security and all that. But dear God, the day after they conferred upon him the head of the family, what was that? It was an additional authority, an additional strength. When they did that, I mean, we went up there. It, it looked like we was going up to pick up the President of the United States. I mean, man, there was security all over the place. Same man, same name, but an additional authority. And I want you to know something. When Jesus Christ of Nazareth was made King of Kings and Lord of Lords, there was conferred upon him a name which is above every name that's named. And at that name, every knee shall bow in heaven, earth, and under the earth. <laughs> Praise God. God created you in His image, full of faith, power, and authority to live in victory and change the world around you for Him. In the Your Authority in Jesus package, Kenneth Copeland gives you the answers you need to walk daily in the authority Jesus has provided. The Authority of the Believer, a foundational teaching series by Kenneth Copeland, shows you how authority was given at creation, lost through disobedience, and regained through the victory of Jesus at the cross. He did it all for you. The Companion Study Guide has outlines, study focus and declarations, questions, and a place to take notes while you listen. Combine God's Word with your authority and walk in the good works God intended for you. See things change in your family, finances, health, and relationships. Use your authority in Jesus' name. You have authority in this world. Learn how to use it. Order your Authority in Jesus package on CD with accompanying study guide for only $25.99 and enjoy a special savings of 25%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash TV special and request your package today. Discover the power available to you to live every moment in authority and in freedom from the curse of the law. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. Every believer has been given authority in the name of Jesus, but we've got to learn how to use what God has given us. And there are people in your life right now that only you can influence. God has put you there for a reason, and it's to bring His blessing into their life. So you've got to quit seeing the things around you as impossible. You've got to start taking your God-given authority and speak. Speak to your family. Speak to your city, your nation, because there's power 
in the name of Jesus. And this series is going to help build your confidence in that name. And it's going to put your faith into action. So order this package today and go to kcm.org. Hey, did you know that the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine is KCM's free monthly publication? It's been transforming lives with the power of God since 1973. And when you get a hold of it, you can read powerful articles by Kenneth and Glory Copeland and other ministers as well. There's also a, a special section in every magazine, uh, Partner Testimonies. We call that the Good News Gazette. And that's going to uh, strengthen and encourage your faith as well. You can always read the online version at kcm.org or on your smartphone or your tablet with eBVOV and Uberflip. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of ways for you to stay plugged in to what God is doing through KCM. Get that magazine, read it, and, and watch what God is doing in your life and, and watch what He's doing in other lives and ministries all over the world. Praise the Lord. Uh, you can find out more information about that at kcm.org. Now on tomorrow's broadcast, Brother Copeland's going to be teaching again, declaring Jesus' conquest over Satan. Man, don't you just love the way that sounds? Jesus' victory means we have victory. And you do not want to miss this. You don't want to miss out on a single minute of victory. You need it in your life. I do. We all do. So join us for this broadcast. You're going to be blessed. Thanks so much for watching today. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing. Now, God loves everybody the same. He don't love, love me any more or you any more or me any less or you any less. And there ain't nothing you can do to make him stop loving you. You can't. He'd have to not be loved to quit loving you. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event, the 2014 Venezuela Victory Campaign. Kenneth Copeland will be in Maracaibo, Venezuela, September 5th through the 6th. Join Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher for the Living Victory New York Faith Encounter September 12th through 13th in New York, New York. Word Explosion September 25th through 27th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. For more information on these and other events, go to the KCM website 